Um, I'm going to introduce our Secret Surprise special guest momentarily, and then we're going to have a lovely conversation with this person whom I love so much. The first, can you hear me? Okay. I'm going to try to not mangle this for you. This is a song that I love. <laughs> it's called Turning Me On. So, so, he's giving me the thumbs up. That's a song called Turning Me On that is a song by today's Secret Surprise special guest. Let me get the uh, gallery view and then let me get the uh, full screen. Did you write an introduction? Uh, guys, I wrote an introduction. Okay, I wrote an introduction too, Josh. You did? Yeah, I did. Do you want to go first? I'm going to introduce, uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> welcome to Mary's version of what heaven might be like. It's just to sit and hang out and watch what's about to happen and just enjoy it. You don't have any obligation or anything. You just get to witness joy. And um, I present to you the next introduction. It's very subjective though. It's Mary, just I qualified it. it. It's, I qualified yeah. it. Guys, I wrote an introduction. Today's Secret Surprise special guest is one of my favorite musicians and one of my favorite people. Every time I talk to him, I laugh a lot and I learn a lot. He's put out a couple solo records under his own name. And for the past, I don't know how many years, he'll, he'll, he can tell us, maybe 10 or 11 or 12, um, he has played keyboards and guitar in one of America's truly great and glorious rock and roll bands, Drive By Truckers. Please join me in welcoming to the living room the extraordinarily talented and friendly Jay Gonzalez. Jay, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. How y'all doing? Uh, we're doing all right. We're super happy. That you are here. How many people yeah. are watching today? 15,000? 20,000? Wait, Chloe Jr. I got distracted. We gotta, oh. we gotta, <laughs> I got We're gonna use engaging the powers as the, our promo. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, I see. You're gonna get the, you're gonna frame the shot here. Cause you're yeah, the producer. Yeah, I'm the producer here, yeah. guys. <laughs> Do I need to move? Can I? No, you're good. You stay you're right here. You got the whole, you got the lighting going. No, I know. It's um, just... And I saw you were like, it was that way before. It just kind of works out. I yeah. aim it up enough to have a little bit of a framing going on. Yeah. Too. You were goofing around with the guitar, though, I saw also, which was very exciting. Yeah, that was, yeah, just, I, it, this is just my music. You know, it's our, it's our house is an old 50s ranch, yeah. you know, Forest Heights, which you know of. And, yeah. and uh, it's just, you know, half of them had carports, and this one, fortunately, they closed in. So it's just like uh been my uh noise making room much to the chagrin of katie and billy sometimes <laughs> billy will be like why is daddy playing the same thing over and over again you know like because daddy's crazy yeah and he thinks he can get it perfect yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah let this is yeah <laughs> um oh 
it's so great. And what's, um, so this is the first question that I always ask every guest, which is, how have you been? How are you, how are you faring? <laughs> well, relatively speaking, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's, um, we're really lucky at Katie, you know, Katie's teaching school up the street at, at um, Bernie Harris Lyons yeah. Middle School, sixth grade math, and yeah. Billy's a freshman at Clark Central. Is that, wow. did you go to Clark Central? No, I, I was going to go to Cedar Shoals, but then I moved away after eighth grade. Oh, right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, little, so, yeah, Billy, little Athens after. talk for you guys. Yeah. Huh? Little Athens talk for the audience. Yeah, here. right. That's yeah. right. We're, we're, you know, every once in a while I forget, but the, he's, he's OG Athens. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Billy's doing virtual stuff, and then I've just been, um, you know, cooking a lot of food and uh, eating a lot of food and uh, and playing a lot of you know music by myself mostly. <laughs> yeah. But occasionally, you know, meeting my friend George outside, and he plays sax, and we'll you know be on the other side of the yard mm. and, and play. Probably neighbors love that, but it's, it's been, yeah, you know, keep them busy. Right. No, that's sweet. Well, and I know like you've done some solo shows, some, some fundraisers and some tip jar shows, some Facebook and some noon chorus. And I don't know if you have like a slate more of them planned. I just, I just saw today that the truckers are doing some kind of like Thanksgiving uh, blowout. Yeah, we're doing a, um, it's Wednesday night and it's a, I don't know. The official title I think is the drive by truckers thanksgiving filter variety show <laughs> uh, which is thanksgiving filter is one of patterson's song all about oh, yeah. just the travails and the issues of having family uh yeah. which you know is, is an issue at this point as far as getting together with everyone but yeah um probably people will probably actually be looking forward to getting together yeah. with family <laughs> if it would be uh safer but yeah anyway yeah, yeah we all videotaped uh videotaped the show. <laughs> we all filmed uh our segments together and i i got together with brad in our headquarters our big headquarters um a, you know, warehouse space yeah. storage space and uh played piano and he had this um really cool um drum kit he put together out of a wardrobe case and everything mm-hmm. and so we kind of and we did a bunch of you know we did um rhinestone cowboy and, oh great um we did a Frida song upon his, not upon his request, but he's always loved that. There's something going on, Frida, oh, you know, yeah. from from Abba. Yeah. And then uh, we did a, and then um, Christopher Cross. I, actually, I'll just, I'll, and then the last two will yeah. be a surprise if anyone. Great, wants to great. Leave. But um, in that, certainly in that vein, yeah. kind of stuff we grew up hearing. Uh, yeah. Rhinestone Cowboy was great when he he uh, he was telling me how he, he as a kid that's one of the first things he remembers hearing on the radio and, wow. and me too it's like you know a kid from the new york suburbs being like i don't know what a rhinestone is i don't, yeah. know, what <laughs> is. I don't know what's compromising on the on the road of my horizon but i you know but but it's you know it's one of those things i know that when the chorus hits i'm just like soar you know soaring mm-hmm. and i was i was excited to find out that it was actually written by a, a real building songwriter oh <laughs> wow, think, i didn't know that Maybe Larry Klein. I forget his name yeah. exactly, but it's like it's awesome. It's not like some you just think it'd be some Nashville. Yeah, 70s right. right now, but uh, anyway, that's what. And then and then Patterson and I did a couple songs. Yeah. Cooley did a bunch, and Matt Patton did some stuff, yeah. and we're all uh, we're apparently piecing it together at this point. So. Um, oh, that's so cool. That's so great. I'm psyched to watch yeah. it. And it's like, um, well, we're gonna get into the whole like sure. pop music thing in a bit because I'm sure. I'm psyched to talk to you about that. But just hearing all the hearing you talk about all those old covers, like. Um, Oh, it just makes me so happy. So, um, but I will, since, since I know we have like some, some drive by truckers fans watching, I'm going to like mention, uh, check in with you about a couple of truckers things and then, um, and then we'll start goofing around maybe. But, um, so you, uh, well, first of all, like you guys came out with a record at the beginning of the year, you did some shows, you let me sit in with you on one of them, which is amazing. And you were supposed to do a ton more and be on the road basically all year, and then yeah. it didn't happen. And but you, but you basically made a quarantine record. So can you just talk a little bit about what else is going on? Sure. Yeah. The the new okay. You know, we we the first day of our tour that was a month long and started in um, Indianapolis and was and was going to end like going all the way across, all the way out to Vancouver, coming down the west coast and coming back. Um, the very first day we got there and, and that was sort of the day when everything, they, they limited everything to under 200 people in Portland and Seattle shut down and, you know, March, mid-March, early yeah. March. And, 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 and I just, from morning, they canceled the West coast. And then we came back from lunch 
and they were like, well, we're canceling, you know, Minneapolis and Chicago. You're just going to do tonight. And then we were sound checking and they were like, <laughs> we're calling, you know, and that's when I realized and we, and um, Kelsey Weldon was, we were supposed to tour with her. She's a great songwriter from Nashville and singer and band. And she, we met her and said hello and goodbye. And then, <laughs> and then drove back home. It was crazy, you know, but so yeah, so we've, you know, we've all been home st- and doing stuff, but we had a lot of tracks. Our last record, um, had we did 16 tracks in Memphis, and um, so we had, and it was ended up being a nine song record. So it's weird, it's like a let you know, it's a, a record made up of leftovers, and then we did three songs remotely, uh, that Patterson had written, and um, and then um, and then took a couple of singles and put it together, and you know, you know, that can really you know, some records like that that you're just like, oh god, it's just like slapdash kind of yeah. thing, but I really do think. The way Patterson puts records together, it's it, I enjoy it as much as the previous record, you know, if not more. It's like yeah. a really cool um, thing, and I, I, you know, I mean, it, just keeping creative during this time. I mean, that's what's kept me sane. Is sort of I've been lucky enough to do a lot of stuff with Matt Patton yeah. in his studio, remote stuff, and it's yeah. just like, you know, you're it's it's the same as this. It's like we're not in the same room, right? But we're doing what we can to try to communicate with other folks, you know. And keep, yeah. Keep the, well, yeah. and that's what you, I mean, that's what you do. Like, you play, and you write, and you perform, and you, like, yeah. it's who you are. Yeah. You know? yeah, I mean, yeah, and it's, yeah, so it's weird. It's sadly, not sadly, it's just like, it's, for me, it it, it didn't change as, as much, uh, you know, as far as my normal sort of thing, you know, yeah. but, but, um, but I've been able to sort of get my stuff together recording wise and like instrument wise and like, and then sort of focus in and finish up some of my own projects that I, you know, we've been working on peer, you know, sort of piecemeal over since we tour so much, you know? So yeah. the upside is I've gotten to actually wrap up a few, a few projects, which is nice records and stuff. And, yeah. and then, and then start new ones and, yeah. you know, and then see how it goes from there. You yeah. Know, so. um, I mean, have you guys thought, far enough out to be like well if it's safe come june then we'll then we'll roll yeah. and do a big tour or yeah we have i mean we have uh well we have i mean we have a european tour in june that's still technically on the books but that's yeah. you know up in the air we ha- we were gonna do um uh a show that this guy ended up like a new year's thing and that ended up not working out just because things are getting crazy again and so yeah. it's um it just didn't logistically work out but that might be pushed back to March, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, they're doing everything they can to get, get yeah. it, get us working, you know, but in the safest way, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's just strange as time goes on and you check back in and it's just, everything's just keeps, you know, being pushed, pushed back. I mean, and, and, uh, you know, we lost the Caledonia lounge in Athens, which was yeah. kind of where I spent a lot of time, you know, friends with the folks who opened it in yeah. the late nineties and was kind of my generation, you know, my 40 watt original 40 watt, you know, yeah. sort of just cause it was a, in the original 40 watt building or not the original, but the, the second one technically, yeah. but, but you know, yeah, it's, I, it's, uh, and other ones are holding on and stuff. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a weird time, but, uh, yeah. but, uh, but it's, you know, I love that you do this and, and I feel like it's kind of an analog to what I'm doing. You know, it's, it's, we, we both can do this thing. I think it's cool not just having i mean it's great if you're a songwriter and you can perform your stuff but yeah. having playing other people's folks too it's like or other people's songs yeah. that comfort people you know is is a nice i think to me that's that's almost the nicest thing about it is like um once i sort of stop trying to make all these theme shows from my virtual oh. shows and yeah. play songs i wanted and like realize it's just like what you know what are some guilty pleasure songs that people you know it just it's quarantine it's like you know yeah. I gave I gave up trying to eat light during quarantine because it's just you know you need comfort and so uh, I'm yeah. giving you comfort food. Yeah, no, I totally get it. Well, and it's like, and because you do these, um, I mean, you do these, you know, in non-pandemic times, you do these live, you know, cover shows in Athens um, where you, it's you know you and the piano and you're singing and you're singing people's you know comfort songs and um, and I always love seeing, you know, you post set lists from those and I'm always so excited by them, which is why I was like horning in to like, please invite me and let me come do no, one with you. No, but, I mean, we were supposed to do it. I you know, know I know. Summer. We, we will know? do it. We know? will. Yeah. I mean, it's, it'll, you know, <clears throat> if 
that I'm sure the theater will have me back, but if not, we'll figure it out. It's in my backyard. We'll, you know, yeah, it'll be exactly. somewhere. Yeah, whatever, whatever. But it's, it's like... It's a nice thing to do, yeah, sorry. No, no, I just feel like I get, um, you know, and I've learned this from the ballpark also, that it's like, you could, you know, you play a song that somebody tells you is their favorite song or is a song that has meaning to them, you know, a cover song, and it's like, it's great. Like, it's, I don't have to like the song, you know? Right. Like, I'll play it as well as I can. Um, I played a song today at the top of the show that was a Rascal Flatts song that I never heard before. And right. I'm not going to shit talk it because the people who requested it are probably watching because they're like, it's our anniversary and it's our song. Um, or, yeah. And it's, you know, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful love song that was not on my radar. And uh, I learned it and I played it. And it was like, uh, yeah, it was just, it was wonderful to like feel that, make connections in that way. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, the, the thing that has kind of taught me over the last five, six years of doing it, I mean, I've done, actually, I started doing it at a, at a bowling alley years ago, Yeah. and it was great, because the only people who were there were, like, people bowling in the one lane in, the, in, the, in that part of the lounge, or, you know, or my wife, or a couple of friends, you know, yeah. and then I eventually, if doing it a year, I had, like, one or two people that would come back, but it was, like, it was the start of it, but I definitely kind of would do more sort of rock you know, I would play Surrender by Cheap Trick, and, you know, on piano or whatever. But, like, as as I went along and sort of learned, you know, some, some of the deeper cut stuff from the 70s and the AM stuff, it's like, it was just every time I find out about one, it's like rediscovering, you know, part of my childhood. Because I don't remember, I have a horrible memory, I don't remember, you know, TV show themes, but I remember, or I remember, I don't remember the... The plot of TV shows, oh, I remember the themes yeah. very well, and, and you know, and, and, and it's just... Uh, there's something about it where I think my job is, is to, is, is to, yes, my, yeah, everybody's got their sort of line as far as what they think is yeah. a guilty pleasure or just yeah. like a boring, you know, yeah. and, and, and it, and everybody has a different one and, yeah. and music is, you know, it's like there is good and bad music, but it's, it's all subject. It's so yeah. subjective, you know? Yeah. And so I know I, you know, obviously I could take it pretty far and it's funny cause some people would be like, Oh man, play this song. And, yeah. And I'm just like, oh God, I don't want to play that. But it's yeah. like, it's you know, I understand that that that's you know, if, if I'm how you can associate, you know, if I'm if I play Thunder Island by Jay Ferguson, that you yeah. think I would like, like, uh, you know, um, um, like um, uh, Michael McDonald era oh, yeah. sort of, you know, you know, it's like it's not that I just like it's just it doesn't it has to almost be a personal thing for me. So that's the thing. Like as far as like the songs on the rooftop or on the virtual thing that I play. You know, for myself, it's just, you know, it's genuinely, even if it's just like, is that, I'm playing, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah. You know, like, like Gloria, you know, by Laura Branigan. Yeah. It's like, you know, I grew up with an Italian American family and th and they had the original 45 of the dude who wrote Gloria and that I can't remember oh, now, but yeah. like, you know, and, yeah. the, and then it was like right before and then all of a sudden the, it became a hit with Laura Branigan. And so I was like, and I love that kind of, you know, thing. And so, um, I'm just trying to think of examples, but yeah, so it's, you know, yeah. But the thing is, if I get a request and I can actually play it, then I'm going to do it. I mean, yeah. to the point where I think one night I was playing hymns and so, and some, and so, the guy was up and he was singing the hymn yeah. and it was, and everyone was trying to stop me from letting him to do it. But I couldn't, <laughs> it was like, you know, I, when I'm in that position, it's almost like I try to be run the show and not let things get out of hand. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes it's like, interesting to watch a guy sing hymns you know yeah. and, and and me pretending i know you know <laughs> anything other than catholic uh you know sort of catholic oh. songs no it's so great <laughs> well because i i mean i have so many thoughts about everything you just said one thing is that i mean if you, if it's something like if people are singing along mm -hmm. that's that's a party like i personally i don't ever 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 need to hear don't stop believing ever again Right, but, but it, I know if I play it, especially at the ballpark, fucking like yeah. thirty thousand people are gonna stand up and sing and cheer. And it's and he, or even if you're playing in a living room and eight people are singing, it's like it's a beautiful thing. Um, sure, sure. And you're also like I like that you are. You know, you talk about how you're kind of keeping control. You also you are curating. Like you, you'll take these requests, but you you're also someone who's like you know you're like look, I really love. Nick Lowe and Badfinger and Nilsson. So guess what? <laughs> You're going to yeah. hear some of that, you know? Well, that's, being fortunate, that's the difference between, you know, I'm lucky to be in a situation where, you know, I'm doing kind of whatever, they're just like, play whatever you want. Rick Poss yeah. is the guy at the theater, yeah. my old friend, and he, 
and he was just like, you know, just do your thing, everyone. But we need, and it was great because I was like, well, I'm touring. Maybe I could do one Wednesday and then do it a few weeks later. He's like, we need to do it where you have like at least three or four in a row, yeah. you know, which is logical, but I don't think logically. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> and, you know, and so it was just like, and it picked up as time went on. And over four, four or five years, that went by so fast. That it, you know, I, I, it's, I have like a core group of, you know, and half of it's like my wife's, you know, family and stuff, but it's like, great because they love it and then i have i have folks who were like there you know if i did a say a jimmy webb show you know yeah. it's just, yeah i have like someone coming up to me and requesting the association requiem you know like oh. like weird like not not windy or yeah you know, right you know, it's, it's 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 then that always blows my mind you know and i feel like when it, you connect with someone and they're like oh my god you know and then br- i bring up you know friends to sing and play and yeah. it's always interesting to see what, what folks pick and that also pulls me out of my comfort zone too because yeah. yeah a lot of times it isn't it's weird it's like something like like um super tramp is like i like super tramp but i think because of the way i sound people think i'm like no all super tramp stuff but i actually like i've avoided playing it because it's so tech i like a big part of doing this gig is yeah. like if i play a cover song too many times that's why i don't like doing too many band cover song you know what i mean like cover sets yeah Yeah, we did a smithereens one and the beatles but it's like you know we did one practice or maybe two you know it's like because then i can't you know i'm so sick of from learning it you know so this is like i can learn the basic chords you know and and write them out and then uh and then just you know it's the cliff's notes version version of it you know and and uh you know a lot of times i'm missing sections and stuff you know how it goes you just you, you i mean it amazes me how you I'm not playing anything that I've never heard like you are. And that's, you're like, you know, pulling stuff up and listening to it for five seconds and then playing it. And, and I love that. I mean, I've definitely learned to sort of figure out progressions easier and like yeah. sort of see the patterns through all these songs. Yeah. But, but, but when you do it, it's like, it's just, you know, it's, it's wonderful to see. Well, I hear. totally get, I mean, I, I totally get everything you're saying about like the repetition and that you don't like, it needs to be fun. Um, yeah. And for you and for me, that it, that means it needs to be a variety. Like I could, I could play the same twenty songs at Fenway every single night, and like probably generally people would be okay with it. Maybe a few people would be like, "Oh, it's the same song." But like, you know, I have this weird compulsion where I'm like, I have to make it, even if it makes it a lot harder, it's going to make it so much more fun and just like mix it up as much as possible. And it, and it is that like if something, you know, some like. I don't know, Last summer, two summers ago, I guess, like Old Town Road came out and every night people were requesting Old Town Road. And I played right. it, I played it like five times and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm done with Old Town Road now. Like, I need to at least like not play it for a couple of months, you know? Sure, sure. I mean, it'll, but, it'll nuts on the, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, but, but opening it up to requests like that, I mean, that's, that's not something that was really, I mean, because because of social media, I mean, yeah. you're able to do that, but that wasn't any done right back in the day, right? I mean, you couldn't yeah. really, you know, other than maybe one of the players requesting something. Yeah, it know. was, I got such infrequent requesting and feedback, and I, just, to the point where, like, I don't know if people like it or not, you know, you right. know? like, I mean, you could kind of tell a little bit, certain things get more of a cheer reaction or something, but, um, right. But no, the, you know, like as horrible, like obviously Twitter is a, a cesspool, but like I figured out like a useful way yeah. for it to like help me be good at what I'm trying to do. So totally. No, and that's the thing, you know, all these things can be used as tools, but unfortunately, you know, they, yeah. they can be used for, for evil too, you know, yeah. and it is, I, I still go to Twitter, but it's, it's so hard to sort of wade through, you know, yeah. um, everything. I mean, I, you know, and that's the, that's why I didn't, I don't really post a lot of video of me playing the stuff. And that was a weird thing. Like I started like getting responses from friends in other parts of the country. And they're like, that set list is amazing. And that's awesome. man. that's so cool. And I'm like, yeah, but it's really like, you don't know. It didn't necessarily sound cool. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. I'm playing, you're not hearing yeah. it. So it's a weird thing. So I'll occasionally post stuff, but these virtual shows, um, you know, at least uh, th- through the, 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 Drop by Chucker fan community, I got, you know, got to get some of that out there more than yeah. folks who are in the Southeast and can maybe, you know, come by or live in Athens and Atlanta or something and, or happen to be stopping through. It's yeah. like, it's, uh, it's opened it up a lot, you know? And so, um, it's a lot of fun, you know? And, um, it's just the, the hard part is like, you know, being at home and just knowing that I all I have to do is like turn oh. it off and yeah. then I can go to bed. Yeah. So I, I drink like, 
you know, too much. I've gotten better. I figured I've, I've gauged it all out, you know. But, like, the initial time, it was, especially when things were darker, yeah. it was, just, you know. And I would do, like, Instagram streaming stuff where yeah. I would just play at, like, 2 in the morning and put the lights down. And it was concerning a lot of my friends. So, you know, <laughs> it's a different well, it does... thing. you got to kind of approach it. But I feel like I'm taking some time off from doing um, solo ones just because we'll do the trucker one. And then Friday, I'm actually doing, uh, I, re- I wanted to mention real quick, for yeah. Why Hunger uh, oh, on Facebook. I'm going to do a stream. Uh, my friend Hillary works with Why Hunger. And um, and so um, I'll probably, that'll probably be the last thing this year, and yeah. then we'll see how it goes next year. Because, I mean, it was... I don't know. It's it's I like you're saying. It's like it's like shooting yourself in the foot. Like you want it to be new every time. Yeah. But at this point, I you know I ended up looking at my list, and it was you know over five years of trying to do mostly new stuff every week. Yeah. Ended up being about nine hundred songs, yeah. and like, and some of them only you know ten people saw. So I forget that you know the one time I played it when it was raining and no one was there. So yeah. it's like you know I try to find those and 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 with. You know, it's you can find you can make a really good set list, and then also just you know, I'm gonna play Magic by Pilot. I'm gonna play like stuff yeah. that I enjoy that's upbeat that is you know will make a certain small <laughs> group of people happy, you know, and uh, and try to do that, you know. So. Um, yeah, well, and it's just um, oh shit, what was I gonna say? Uh, hey, I don't even remember. Yeah, well, oh, I, just, I don't even. Wait. I'm like going so far off. No, 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 <laughs> because. I'm totally, uh, I, I got so excited to see you, Jay, that I messed up my production of getting this. I, want, oh, I just got to adjust the camera for a second here. It'll make it so much better. Just I think that's my better. better side. I'll just I think that's better. <laughs> yeah, that, that's your good side. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, buh, 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 buh. okay, I got to mention one thing about Drive By Truckers, yeah. and then I want to talk about some of these songs, because you do have, and it's on your homepage, people can look it up, jgonzalez.com, you have the, these are like, you're like, these are the 900 songs that I play when I do I these shows, this. and people can request them. <laughs> so I was scrolling through it this morning to be like, and I was, I was like cherry picking, I was like, these are certain ones I want to ask you about, because I think you were saying earlier, like, it has to resonate, and that is true, like the, I find that the algorithms don't work, like when you're on spotify and it says oh you like this then you probably also like this it's like it's not no, for me it's not no. how it works like um so uh it's, it's, there's something to it and i think you know i don't know what the what the factor going through the is other than i think with me a lot of times it's sort of like a a sadness <laughs> an underlying you know upbeat with an underlying sadness kind of which is sort of the what the power pop thing and and again and sort of that the wist, wistfulness tends to be so that's what I have to watch out for when I'm and I guarantee you, you know the ones you'll probably pick are probably somewhat wistful song it's just like it's just well, that's, you know I picked I picked the ones that I was we'll get there when we get there I'll, and I'll yeah, explain yeah, it but I, first I just want to talk about um so you've been playing with the truckers since 08 09 08 okay March of 08 yeah so if if my chronology is correct um, you, <laughs> you are the keyboard successor in that band of Spooner Oldham. Is that sa- yeah. more or less safe to say? Technically speaking, yes. Yeah. yeah. And not only yeah. that, no. not only that, but you and people who don't know, Spooner Oldham is one of the all-time legendary uh, American keyboard players. If, if you don't, writer, you should not. Yeah, yeah. If, 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 you're, if you're taking this course for credit, you have to look up Spooner Oldham. Um... <laughs> And then uh, second is um, right, like, as you were joining or right before you joined, the Truckers cut a record where they were the backing band for Booker T, who is also, like, <gasps> one of the all-time, le- like, maybe the best-known, yes, you know, the organist of American music. Of, uh, yeah, you know, the so keyboard. I just... Oh. And, and, and... Again, I mean, we've talked about Booker T a ton on the show, but it occurred to me this morning as I was thinking about this, I was like, well, okay, so Spooner played organ on Aretha's version of Respect, right. and Booker played organ on Otis's version of Respect. I didn't even think about it. And, yeah. and, <laughs> and, and, and you're the, I don't know, you're the, you're the guy who follows them, right, in the lineup. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's but I'm also the guy who's like not, you know, other than taking lessons from seven to twelve, not really a keyboard player. You know what I mean? Like as far as like, 
yeah. that's not my most comfortable place. So especially at that point when I joined, I was playing with this band, The Possibilities and stuff in, in, in Athens. And so I was playing keyboard in bands and stuff. Yeah. But that had been a few years before. Actually, I was in this band, Nutria, and, and was mostly playing guitar. And so I had been playing a lot of keyboards. And then when that came about, I remember hearing a Spooner was going to be on that record and, and just like, oh, this is amazing. And then I heard the record and then and then Patterson asked me to play with him. And, and Spooner had been touring with him, but he, he, you know, was, I think he had fallen or he got hurt. And so he mm. couldn't really tour. They, you know, it's he's he's a little bit older than them and it was sort of a tough thing to kind of you know the touring can be rough yeah, yeah. Been doing it for so long but um he uh uh yeah so they 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 graciously asked me you know instead of some hot shit nashville guy or something you know i mean it's i think they knew from the possibilities and he had played with members in that band and he, yeah. he, he was we played together and opened for them back in 2002 well i don't know but, it, but jason was in the band right. and stuff and so so he knew that I, the one thing I'm not going to do as of yet anyway is over, overplay or, you know, yeah because I'm a guitar player and I know, and there's already two or three guitars going. <laughs> so. so that's no. the key. It's like, I can pull back. And that's the thing that blew my mind when I heard Spooner, like when I had to learn his parts was just like, it's like, he's just going, you know. Like once in the third verse of a song and that's it. And there's nothing else. And yeah. it's like. But it's like perfect, you know. And, yeah. and so, sorry, I, I don't know if you can hear it. But yeah, I, no, that came right. through. That came through pretty clean. So yeah. <laughs> um, well, right, and that's you know that was part of his mastery is like knowing how, when to push and when to pull back and how much to oh, give yeah. and how much to lay out and um, yeah. It just and, Booker, and I mean Booker, Booker is almost like the other side of it. I mean, and they're so similar in ways. Yeah. And, that, and I'm, uh, I won't I won't go too far on this, but like I just feel like he. Is I feel like Spooner just, it just happens, you know, he feels it and it happens. I feel like Booker's a little more like thinking about it and planning it out. Yeah, but, Booker but makes they, arrangements. He makes arrangements, yeah. even if it's on the spot. Like, yeah. I, I, I think John asked him, John Neff asked him if, you know, do you improvise a lot when you're doing these? Like, do you, or do you, do you know, always know what you're playing before you play it? He's like, oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, of course, it is, yeah. you know, it's just, so anyway, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I've, it's an unworthy luckiness and excitement, but I know, but I'm at least I appreciate yeah. being, you know, in the, in the presence of those guys, albeit very briefly. Yeah. I mean, you know, I didn't, I didn't need to be up there during the Booker T shows. I mean, yeah. I was like padding on Wurlitzer and I had a tambourine, you know, <laughs> I would just, I just like sit behind and just like watch the show basically. Yeah, so yeah. Was a fun um, no, that's amazing. Well, and it's, I mean, you are like, don't sell yourself short. You are you are a fantastic keyboard player. I've heard your recordings. I've watched you play. I've stood over your shoulder and watched yes. you voice things. Yeah, like played right side by side. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I like like I you know I know what you can do, and I think that like I don't know. I mean, this is a whole other topic. We don't need to go down this road, but like I just I just feel like a, a hotshot Nashville guy would not have been the fit. For yeah, and I don't mean like that, that, you know, there's plenty of people in Nashville play very tasteful stuff. I don't mean that. I just mean, like, yeah, like, like, you know, someone who's, yeah, very, you know, can just shred, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I, I love that Corey Henry guy and he's amazing. And I actually bought his like course to learn, oh, so nice. I can learn how to play a bit better, yeah. but re like two days ago, but, but like, if I think he has, you know, some people, he expresses himself in, you know, a lot more you know more notes and stuff and and it's just it's just um you know sort of my my restrictions i think kind of help with this band you know and yeah i mean honestly it's like i think patterson would be happy if i just did like a pedal tone octave thing on almost every song you know a song yeah. and maybe you know a swoopy um band on the run synth thing you know with portamento and and, and yeah. you know i'd be good but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's i love it that they're always trying to you know just strip it down as much as possible, you know. Yeah, so. for sure. Um, yeah. All right, let's get to these guilty pleasures. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna name. I I just cherry picked like some songs off your 900 song list that were the ones where I was. I just have my own Wait, curiosity is about that, them. Is yeah. That what? An exaggeration. What? The 900 song list. There's there's over 900 songs on your list, right? It's somewhere thereabouts. Yeah. It might be eight, it might be high eights. Yeah. Oh um, so I just picked, I picked a few that were either songs that like I got really excited about for one reason or another, or I haven't thought about often enough or something. So 
I'm just gonna like kind of throw throw out yeah. some titles and and I just want to get your it's almost like a not like a Rorschach but like an association right. like tell me like yeah, do you love like it do you hate it. it like what's cool about it what's annoying about it what's boring what's exciting whatever and first before right. you do you got to swear yeah. on the Bible this is okay this is the Joel Whitburn <laughs> Billboard there Book of Top 40 Hits 7th Edition 2000 <laughs> nice. all right swear to tell the I truth swear. That is, I need to get that. Wow. Um, oh, I'll get you one. Those, oh my the, God, that's, the, this that's, book is this book is amazing. You just like it's whoop. just everything. It's every hit. Oh it's my every gosh. it's every chart. Yeah, oh. and all cross referenced. And I know it's a it's a gold mine, especially when I started at Fenway in two thousand three. Like so much of this information just was not findable online right. easily. You know. So yeah. Um, okay, here we go. First okay. up. Climax Blues Band, I Love You. Wait, love hold you. on. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. While you, while you think about it, yeah. just for the people yeah. in the chat, yeah. this is what we're tuning in for. So <laughs> this is what you're tuning in for. This is what I'm tuning in for. <laughs> Continue to chat. If you need to sort of take a bathroom break or whatever you need to do, you can do that. But there you go. It, it's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, um, um, I, uh, I didn't back then as a kid know who Badfinger was, yeah. but I, I thought it sounded like the Beatles or, or, or sounded like day after day by Badfinger or something like that. Yeah. I mean, I associated it and that's, those are the songs that really hit me as a little kid. And, yeah. uh, and so that, that's, you know, that one, when I found out who it was and, and what's the other big hit? Um, oh yeah. Uh, that there are more of like a groovy. Yeah. Pull up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad not knowing it. No, no, that's okay. I know what you're talking about. That's but the, That's the thing, though. I mean, I skim. I'm a, I'm a skimmer. I'm a incompletist, you know? It's yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, oh, I only know the hits. Yeah, couldn't get it right. Yeah, yeah, which is a great song. Yeah. But, it, but when you hear the two, it's such a weird thing. But I love it because it's like, it's a very slick version of what Badfinger would have done, you know? Yeah. It's, more of a roads or something instead. Yeah, it's, it's like polished. but it's, it's so good it, you know melodic and and uh and heartbreaking and then there's this one the one line that like almost makes it like a deal breaker for it not being great is yeah. the sitting around hitting the beer i think it's hitting, hitting the beer sorry man oh yeah hitting the beer um Ooh, but yeah you know it's like which is. over years i've kind of like oh, hitting the beer I, I can handle that it's yeah. like <laughs> anyway well for <laughs> some people it's just some people it's a deal breaker because it's just so they're like it's just too schlocky. It's it, the name it, of the song is it, "I Love You" and it's like sappy sweet and yeah, yeah. I don't but, think it has like the um. I mean, Badfinger could, could have that too, yeah. but I feel like theirs was it was yeah. It was it, every song you know Pete Ham was more of a he had a specific topic and it wasn't like this general like yeah, it's yeah. just calling a song "I Love You" is right. like <laughs> you know what, what, what are you doing? But when you hear it and it's funny, it's like a lot of my friends that are my age or around thereabouts, you know, and remember it. And I've got it requested a few times, but yeah, yeah it's, it's, I just, I still love it. And, and if I don't pull back or think about it in an ironic way, it's just like, I could almost kind of, t you know, tear up, you know, and, you know, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I have, you know, yeah, personally enough. <laughs> okay. Next up the producers, what's he got? Oh yeah. See now that's on the list, but I never actually played it cause oh. it's, too hard for me it was too hard for me to get the voicings and oh, yeah. figure it out in time yeah. so actually that's that's a little bit of a lie but i played it and pr i practiced it once yeah. and i love that like i don't i didn't i've always heard about the producers having because they're from atlanta right Right. yeah uh, did you know about them before you ended up in georgia I, though or i didn't no i didn't yeah. although when i hear i heard a couple of hits or some of their singles from back then recently in the last one of my buddies got heavy into them yeah played some that I didn't really know, you know, I was like, I must have heard that back yeah. then. I mean, it's such a great sort of, you know, just new wavy, but like super slick, but like earworm, yeah. you know, it's insane, but that's a great song. And like, I just, I, I think that I, that when I that summer, I was a little over ambitious with trying to do a bunch of new stuff and I've gotten good at like getting to the day of the show and like the song that was stressing me out the most to do that day i would just cut i've learned to just cut it from the set list and all yeah. of a sudden it's like oh i'm not gonna you know crawl under a rock and not go to the show you know yeah. so well, um 
I mean, so having said that, now I have to learn and play it at the next one. I mean, it's a, it's, I got a lot of time. It's a great tune, but I'm always so yeah, exactly. I'm always so <laughs> amazed when people remember them. Just and that's just my own thing because like they they would get that song would get played when I was a little kid on um, on commercial radio in Athens, and I was not, yeah. you know, I wasn't cool enough to like check out college radio. So that song was like the that song was like the definition of college radio to me, basically. Yeah, you know, when sure. I was like seven or eight. It's great. I, love, I mean, I, 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 I still like listen to and kind of marvel at, at the fact that they were, weren't bigger than they were, you know? Yeah. But. All right, yeah. next up. <laughs> next tune, Steve yeah. Forbert, Romeo's tune. That's one that, that I did, you know, I forgot, I forgot about, and then I was listening, we uh, briefly had XM radio. Yeah. And it was, I don't know if it was one one of the stations, I don't know if it was like when they were doing Yacht Rock Radio, it was like five years ago and Katie yeah. and I heard it in the, in the Lowe's parking lot. Yeah. I feel like it's always like Lowe's or CVS always have the the best like, you know, overhead music, <laughs> but like, or when I'm near them even, it's like yeah. all of a sudden I hear these songs on the radio or on, and, and it was just like, I remember this song and I had forgotten about it. And, and again, in recent times, I posted something about it on Twitter and yeah. Steve Forbert responded, you know, oh, and I'm wow. like, my God, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's really cool when you like, you find these folks that wrote these great songs and then you realize they're, you know, still around and, and, and kind of doing, yeah. he plays quite a bit, you know? Yeah. Or, he's still playing solo shows in little places, you know, and yeah. he's been doing it for 40 yeah. years, but he had a, you know, he hit a home run his first time up. I know. And then, and then it, people were like, you know, he was getting all this press sort of comparing him to Bruce or Dylan or whatever. And then. Right. But any, but he was just like, yeah, no, I'm just a like, I'm a working songwriter, you know. Mm -hmm. And but it's a, as far as the song, it's just great. It's so s simple in a way how it repeats over and over. Yeah. With progression, but it is like the piano playing is very, very, you know, nimble and, yeah. and such a big part of it, you know. And and um. And that is, I forget who it is. It's like, I think it's the same guy that like played piano on the L 70s. Oh, really? I um, didn't really yeah, I got to look that up now, but yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's great. It's just, um, you know, you're selling Katie, uh, y'all know Katie, but yeah. my wife Katie is like, you're, sing you're singing that to me. This is oh, yeah, right. <laughs> like that. You yeah. Know? Every song that I remotely, you know, Dixie Deer and, and Badfinger, Baby. I, am. <laughs> <laughs> I love it's like I feel like I know it, but I don't know if I ever heard it up in New York as a kid. Yeah. But like, maybe on like Fox ninety seven or something. Such a great, bizarre. There's something. I mean, it's there. I, I think they're Dutch. They're but Dutch. It's okay. something, I mean, yeah. 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 And, and 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 the weird thing is like something about my replacement or something it's just a strange line in there which i think you know it's like an, almost like english is second language kind yeah, of right. thing you know like how abba kind of does that where you're like well yeah. it works and it technically makes sense yeah. but <laughs> but it, i love the organ in that and yeah. the jaunty and then the double time thing and the guy's raspy voice yeah. and like it's just such a uh it's, it's great i love it i mean it's it's ridiculous in ways but uh i had i watched the video of it this morning because i was so excited to like talk about it and it is, it's wild, but I feel like, I don't know, it's almost unfortunate in a way because it actually, it's so the thing that it is that it actually kind of looks like a parody now. Yeah. Like if you were to turn on like Fred Armisen and he was doing yeah. like 60s like bubblegum pop, like this is exactly what it would look oh, like. Totally. You know? I mean, they were, yeah, it was just the, the way they were decked out, they were like height of the fashion and everything and and kind of pretty boys and it was just, yeah it's weird it's a weird thing but again it's, and that's one of the ones where it's like you know like i feel bad but i got the record and it's like i played it once and i was like nah it's, you know yeah. that's the one you know yeah, right. I mean, and i'm sure i'm very bad about re giving stuff a chance you know i just yeah. i kind of like play something once and if i'm not like blown away I'm just well like, there's oh. almost there's almost like no i can't think of any 60s european groups like outside of england mm -hmm. that you know that had any yeah. kind of like depth to the catalog really you know yeah yeah you know, i mean you like, like stuff like well, like shocking blue yeah as venus or whatever but it's like it, yeah i mean i got that i remember getting that record and being like 
this is going to be amazing. And it's, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it sounds the same. And I, you know, a lot of times I just love the sound of that era too, yeah, you know, yeah. or production and stuff, but it has to kind of have you know, some sort of hook in it, you know? Yeah. So. Um, okay. This is one of my all time favorite songs. So if you, if you are going to crap on it, that's okay, but just know, <laughs> the, um, care of self 44 by the zombies. Oh God. How, why would I ever, I don't know. I mean, no, no, I know. I mean, it's, again, it's. I, we just talked about how yeah. everybody's line is different, but that to me is like, that's like if. I mean, it, I wouldn't say it's better than Sgt. Pepper's, but that album is like, to me, is equally as great as a, as it's almost like a cut rate. Like I know they did it on a budget, yeah, and they wanted to do strings, but supposedly they couldn't afford it, so it's yeah. like all the Mellotron, which is actually what makes it so cool is the Mellotron ar arrangements, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, but that song is so great, and they're, they're one of my favorite British bands of all time. I got to see them play, uh, our friend, mutual friend Chris Grand yeah, yeah. and his wife uh, had me up, had me and Katie up in New York and for our anniversary, because that was our wedding. Mm -hmm. Well, that wasn't our, uh, this will be our year is our wedding song, yeah, right. which is all the same album. Yep. And, um, you know, we, it was such a joy to see them play it live with all the surviving members and, you know, the drummer who's, you know, just amazing, you know, and, uh, yeah. um, real quick, I, I, I have a funny, st I, I, I ran, you know, we're on a Patterson solo tour yeah. and I woke up one morning in the hotel hung over and, and look and walked down the lobby and there it was Colin passed away who was, uh, oh, at, yeah, at the I, time, I, not Chris White, but the, um, guy was filling in that was used to play in the kinks or whatever. It's like, you know, and you just get that, it's like, feeling of just overwhelmed kind of like emotion and kind of i'm not gonna go talk to them <laughs> they were very nice but you know he's very careful about his voice because it's like he has to he only has to sing these super high parts you know and uh and so you know um it was it was so great but i kind of freaked him out you know and came up <laughs> on him and the player talked to me the whole time because you know, Colin didn't want to talk. Oh, and he, he was a little like, you know, like, all right, come on. Yeah. And then I went outside and I'm yelling across the parking lot. I'm like, oh, I almost, almost said Argent. The zombies are in there. They're all in there. And, and I was like, I haven't seen Rod Argent. I turn around and I go around the, the, uh, their van and he's pulling some bags and he comes in and I like jump and it's like a wall in the van and like, and then a narrow passageway. And I'm like, hey, like, he, I almost turn around. And I just want to say I love you very much and I love you, man, and thank you so much. And I, like, ran, I just, like, I didn't even, like, you know, it was, but it was such a great, awkward, and they were all making fun of me the rest of the, you know. But, yeah, no, Caref, that's a genius song, man. I mean, I'm a sucker for any of those descending, going down the major yeah, scale yeah. kind of things, you right. know. Yeah, that's what Steve Forbert is the same thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and, um, well, no, no, I love you. No, no, no. Same, just quality, you know. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I love that stuff. Um, and the, the qu choir vocals, you know, are really great. At yeah. that, you know. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you said that that was not your wedding song because that's the song about like the girlfriend getting out of prison, right? <laughs> that would have been a great. That been, oh my god! I mean, I've got a friend. You tell her that next time. Uh, had her his daughter's wedding song was she wanted it to be. Wedding in Cherokee County by Randy Newman, which is just a messed up song. Yeah. And she thought it'd be hilarious. You know, she's like a comedy writer, so it makes sense. Yeah. But they, I think they went with like, uh, not Till There Was You, but like, um, oh, uh, uh, oh, gosh. Um, anyway, a, a traditional yeah, yeah. classic, you know, standard. <laughs> um, but I, when she visited the rooftop, I played that for her. And it's just, you know, it's disturbing almost as disturbing as rainy yeah. newman gets but in it you know it's great yeah. so, well that's what anyway, I, yeah that, that would have been weird carousel 44 would have been I've, an iffy song i've had a couple of you tell her that next time you play it you'd be like babe this one's for you carousel yeah. 44 <laughs> i would have <laughs> pick you up from jail um the <laughs> i've had a couple of requests at fenway that i will never forget because it's just so so perplexing to me but one was like it was like i'm here with my wife and it's our anniversary and can you play our song it's um We've got tonight by um, Bob Seger, right? And I'm like, I'm like, I'll I'll play it for you, but like the that entire song is about a one night stand, That's and so about right. like yeah, yeah like we've got tonight. Who needs tomorrow? Um, 
<laughs> so I was like, our wedding song is Dark End of the Street. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, oh, so, right. but the other one, somebody was like, our song, is, you got to play our song for us. It's um, God Only Knows. Now, granted, yeah, this is a fucking amazing song. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I but get it. But it's like, but the very first line, he's like, I may not always love you. <laughs> That's a weird lyric, you know, in that sense, you know. I feel like Brian wrote that, and then Tony, I forget his name, Asher probably wrote the rest of it. Yeah. Because, like, it's such a strange way to lead into a love song. Yeah. But, but I can mm-hmm. kind of relate, because my love songs are always a little strange. But, yeah. but, um. But it's, yeah, that's some funny stuff. Wedding songs, whole other thing, you know. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't know you know. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine how many, you, you at least get a few a night, right? I mean, or a, sh- a, I mean, it's or a, a lot of times it's something where it's like, hey, will you play this for my girlfriend? It's her favorite song. Or, you know, you play this for my boyfriend. Or um, I get a lot of, like, first date, blind date kind of thing. And those are fun to kind of, like, mess around with people sometimes, you know? <laughs> Um, you know, and just like give them something that's like a little bit, you know, I I get a little cheeky with it or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. we had one time there was, uh, there's been a bunch of times where like, there's been a live like wedding proposal at the game. And usually I get word in advance, you know, the camera, the roaming camera guy will be like, Oh, there's going to be a proposal over here. Like at the end of the fourth inning, you know, I'm going to show it and we could show it on the scoreboard and Josh could play a tune or whatever. Um, And I used to get kind of cheeky with those, but then one time this woman like said no, and it was such a like <laughs> horrible disaster. And so I was like, I just can't. I was like, I contributed to possibly ruining that dude's oh, life. God. So I'm gonna have. So then after that, I was like playing it real safe and just like all the traditional, you know. Um, and uh, but no, I played. Um, do you remember uh, Jermaine Stewart? We don't have to take our clothes off to have a good time. <laughs> so that's the song that I was playing when this guy's wedding proposal got rejected in front of 40,000 oh people. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be recorded somewhere. I mean, that's got to be saved, right? Preserved. Oh, yeah, I have audio in the background. I have it. I'll, I'll show it to you sometime. I'm not putting it oh, on you the internet. Oh, you have it? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you document, I mean, show? Or no, I don't, it? like, st- okay. some... I, I never have worried about that. Some stuff yeah. does get recorded. Um, and because a lot of times people, you know, like you're talking about when you post your set list and people all over the country are like, oh, I love that set list. I love that tune. And sometimes I'll post songs that I've played and people are like, I got to hear it. I got to see the video. And I'm like, nah, it's like, it's really kind of like you had to be there. But right, every once right. in a while, something special, especially if it's like, um, sometimes the word will get around to the artist. Like, someone will tweet at the artist and be like, hey, Josh is playing your song at the game. And then they might message me and be like, if you happen to have a recording, I'd love to hear it. And then sometimes I can I can um, scrounge it up. That happened with, um, well, it's happened with a bunch of people, but the one you might appreciate, it happened with Mike Nesmith a couple of years ago, where nice. I played, like, sort of one of his deeper cuts. And somebody uh, was at the game and recognized it and knew and was like mutual friends with somebody who was friends with Nesmith. And so he texted the guy and he's like, yeah. can you tell, can you tell Nez that the organ player is playing this song? And, uh, I didn't know any of this was going on, but I woke up in the morning. I had an email from Mike Nesmith and he was like, oh thank you so gosh. much for doing that. Could you send me a recording of it? That's so great. Man. <laughs> That's, uh, I love it. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, you played a trucker song when we were there and oh, yeah. it's just like, it's so <laughs> exciting, especially when you're in the middle of it and you're hearing it. And also like, you know, Patterson, I don't know anything about baseball, so that's, that's, yeah. like, <laughs> we're just basically, I'm basically there to like waiting for the game, you know, the yeah. innings to end so you, so you can play, you know, <laughs> hear you play and I can scarf down hot dogs and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And be, but, uh, but, it, but it was very enjoyable, man. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was so much fun. The, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a great thing. It's, it's, um, it's gotta be strange because I, I, I see where you're sitting and you're yeah. playing and it feels so separated from all those people, but, you know, when you're out there and you hear it, it's, it's amazing, the volume. Wow. Apparently, Mary is telling me, because she's monitoring the chat right now, that apparently uh-huh. there is, on the internet, there is video of that failed proposal, and he just posted a link to it in our live <laughs> chat, so people can, can <laughs> click on that and enjoy it. Um, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to tell you from the chat, we have a regular viewer who is like a, a superstar mega contributor to Wikipedia, and apparently, uh-huh. like within the first 10 minutes of our conversation, she had drafted and posted your Wikipedia page. So now you have a Wikipedia. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank That's you. awesome. Thanks to Jessamine from Vermont. Amazing Jessamine. Oh. 
thank you for doing that. It's that's uh, make sure you put all kinds of weird stuff in there. Yeah. No, you you make sure you put all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> in there. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah. Um, I have a long man. That we're never going to get to all these. Let me just see if I can pick one or two that are essential before we log off. What? Sure. This is an hour interview already. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> I could go on forever. And, you I know, know, I know. We can, we can my, and we do. My, my tendency um, towards tangents. So whenever you need a okay, <laughs> let, no, okay. I got, I got two. Um, hey, yeah, um, I got two. Jay, there is a request. Um, if you have a picture that you like for your Wikipedia page, you should send that to Jessamine. I have no idea how you do that, but that's what Jessamine said in the chat. <laughs> okay, is... I'll, I'll figure a way. Okay. Right. Or you can <laughs> you can send it to me, and I can send it to her. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a good one. Okay. Send it um, to Josh, and Josh will send it. Okay. I got. I got two. Le well, I got. I got like twenty-five more on this list, but I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I got so excited, and that was after. Like I narrowed it from nine hundred down to like two hundred, and you, then eventually got it down like, to one word answers. And you delighted into it. There was some requests yeah. to hear Jay play a little more. If oh. so, if any of his answers need to be explained further by playing a little bit. Oh, if bit. you want to, like, illustrate an example of a tune or something. Okay, sure, um, sure. Uh, actually, this one might be... If you remember this one, this would, would be an amazing one to hear. I don't mean to put you on the spot, so if you're not... Yeah, no, no, it's, not ready, it's okay. I, but, I um, well, you had a couple of Emmett Rhodes songs on there, and one is with My Face on the Floor. Oh, yeah, yeah. like... Let me see. I think I can, um... I, it's, that's, um... I, I'm not great at playing it, but, uh... Let's see. It doesn't really matter on this show. That's not your problem. Yeah. He does it in E flat, but I can't. I play in guitar keys, so. Yeah. Uh, so, um, E is for Emmett. E is for Emmett. I use, yeah, it's all first names. I don't use their last names. It's, it's bad. My whole system. Um, no, that's not true. It is under her. It's wrong. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, while, well, okay, here it is. I was, while I was looking for it, I was trying to play. Oh, yeah, yeah. you're giving us a little prelude. But can you actually, so we may have some people who like have no idea or know very little about it. Can you give us like the Cliff yeah. Notes Emmett Rhodes story? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know a lot about it. I, I saw there was a, uh, the documentary was briefly up on Vimeo and it's sad, but, but yeah. great. But, um, but yeah, he was, he was um, an LA guy who, it, when he was 20 years old, made a, a completely home recorded record uh, in the, in, in the, I guess the house behind his parents' house. Yeah. And, um, released it and it just and it didn't do well he, they, he he would record everything himself and the record company the contract uh was pretty bad so he was supposed to put out i think like three albums in two years or yeah. or less even and and so he couldn't really keep up because he was a perfectionist but he would play all the instruments and he was kind of like you know it was like mccartney you know he sounded they thought he was yeah 
who's the Beatles, you know, under a fake name because he sounded very McCartney-esque and wrote music like that. But but that first solo record, self-titled record, is sort of just this amazing, like, concise, perfectly put together, uh, uh, you know. So I don't think McCartney could be that sort of sad. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's sort of like the depth of of of, of Lennon. But, but with these just amazing melodies like uh, McCartney. But it's just, it, I feel like it's, as much as it sounds Beatlesque, it's yeah. it's just so distinctly him, you know? Yeah, for so. sure. Well, and this was like 70 or 71, so it's not, yeah. this was like, this like having a home setup was not normal by any stretch at that no, time. No, right, like and really recording, you know, apparently, the, you know, I'm reading the four track was the size of a, you know, it's, it's a fridge or something, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> It's like it's you know it's a whole different thing nowadays. Yeah, everybody can do it. You know, you get GarageBand and you can kind of yeah. release an album on SoundCloud. Not, not that there's anything wrong. That's yeah. what, you know, I do a lot too. But yeah. but I but it's amazing how he, he did that. You know, and um, yeah, really great. You know, songs. And the one I w always want to do is um, um, she. Oh gosh, it's it's got the octaves. Well, I guess they all um, fresh as a daisy. But oh like, yeah. You know, the note, you know, so. I remember yeah. that part, but then I don't remember what comes after that. It's just so shiny and just, you know, it's, it's sunshine pop. It's, it's yeah. very, you know, you could tell he was, uh, you know, in L.A. in the 60s and he kind of came of age there. And and, um, and I think he lived, he was from Hawthorne. I think it was like down the street from where the Beach Boys yeah, were. Yeah, right. So. Well, and he was, um, it's amazing to hear you because I don't think I've ever thought of this before about the, the sadness of it. Because it is sort of like, I mean, obviously the stylistically there's like, there's so much McCartney happening there, yeah. but it is, it's sort of like, it's like he had the damage of Lennon yeah. inflicted on the writing of McCartney, kind of. Yeah, you know? and like, again, that's the, you know, that's the the, the whole thing. Um, I just read Paul Meyer's uh, Power Pop oh, anthology, yeah. I don't know if you've saw it, but yes. I mean, and it's just like, I was trying to see, it was interesting seeing like what I related to and which ones I kind of, you know, were inclined to read and, and you know, and, and, and feel for, and it is like that Michael Shabon talking about big star and just like, it's, you know, I think it's called tragic sadness. And it's just like, Oh my God, that's it. You know? And that's, it's just, um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, I hate it in the sense that it's like, you know, it, it could be kind of bummer music, yeah. but it's, you know, how sad music can make you. Have. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, you talk like Emmett and big star and bad finger are like, like, don't even, don't even pay attention to the music just pay attention to the biography it's like some of the saddest stories yeah. in the history of music you know yeah <laughs> and that and that yeah, weight yeah. kind of like attaches itself to the tunes sometimes you know it does and i think that's why people kind of that's why it sort of lasts and you know it, it's there's a lot of stuff that's sonically like that and when i was you know first getting into you know realizing what power pop, i think i've always loved power pop but when i was actually moved to Athens and sort of just dove past sort of top 40 at the time kind of stuff or, yeah. or you know whatever suburb you know Boston or whatever rock stuff I was listening to you know it's like I was like oh my gosh you know um you know that there's there's this whole category which you know is can easily be made fun of too but I, <laughs> but I like I, I love you know I think that's the whole thing about it, is it's happy sounding music that's generally you know arrested development kind of folks you know stuck at 18 romantically you know yeah, it's right. it's it's there's something going on there it's not it's a you know uh, and i think that's what i love about it you know um but yeah i could just ramble about that for <laughs> and i do by myself i just yeah. shut off I, the computer and just talk to myself here and yeah i mean it's the same thing if it, if it wasn't if there wasn't a pandemic i would be doing exactly the same thing just not <laughs> live for people to other people to watch um <laughs> okay very last one and this one, well, I won't, I'm not, okay. Um, Tommy Rowe, Sweet Pea. Yeah, oh, that's the best, yeah. That is, <laughs> I mean, that is, Tommy Rowe, I mean, and that's, see, but the, the bubblegum stuff is the other side of what I love. Yeah. And I think is a big part of what I, you know, kind of seeps through whatever my original stuff is, is is that like, you know, that and like, um, um, not I think we're alone, like, um, crimson and clover oh, yeah and 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 i love you know i mean i i, I play um sugar sugar all the time like yeah. i love that sort of you know there's no there's no real sadness in those that i yeah. you know, can tell you know but but it's like 
that's just kind of pure joy and yeah. and, and that that just high you know it's organ line yeah. or whatever yeah. like i just love that that kind of stuff i realized kind of works great you know it's, it's like oh that's why i love the cars is because of these single melody you know what i mean yeah, yeah. And, and so uh yeah and then just the, uh, and the difference being sort of like the power pop stuff gets kind of hard rocky and it's kind of square as it goes on but that that stuff is like groovy you know it's just like yeah. i mean even from watching you know i love the songs from um scooby-doo you know which is all kind of that's so i'm sure it's the same people playing yeah, right. a lot of the time yeah, andy Kim and, yeah. or, or LA guys, you know? yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah it's 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 i love that but, um and i but but i also you know i started doing dizzy too because i love just how it keeps modulating and stuff yeah. and it's just like dumb as rocks as far as the chord progression but then it yeah. just keeps like lifting and yeah you know, well that's because i had something with like I didn't love Sweet Pea growing up. I had heard it a few times, and it just never did anything for me because it was, I don't it's know, so whiny and like yeah, it's hey, really then. it's like it's the simplest of simple, which sometimes yeah. I love, but sometimes I yeah, don't. Yeah. And um, but I like listened to it a couple times. Actually, I tracked, a, I recorded a version of it with Dressy Bessie that I don't think has ever seen the light of day, unfortunately. Okay. But um, that would make I could totally hear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she yeah. she called me and she was like, "What do you think about this tune?" I, and I'd love to have you on organ. I was like, "Oh, you would slay this," um, yeah. and she did. But um, for me, like the saving grace was well, a it's literally only two minutes long. And it has like a modulation in it, and it's still only yeah. two minutes. And I'm like, perfect. Like you. No, no. I mean, that's, that's the genius of those songs. I mean, yeah. Sugar Sugar is very short, and yeah. like, um, you know, even um, da, 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 um, um, <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. I got love oh, in my yeah, tummy. Yeah. <laughs> so my, I remember bringing that CD, and I had gotten a reissue of it, and for my band, you know, and playing it, and just like I'm in the control room, and I could hear him just like. Yeah laughing and snickering in the other room just like like what do you do you yeah. know and i'm like isn't this great you know it's like it's it's uh you know like you're saying that line i've always been on the other side of that line generally which is or the time i try to play like montage like the like the guy you know guy from the left banks like next band oh yeah and it, you know, i remember playing it in the and like i bought it and we were playing in the van and it's like a song called like I'm a grand pianist or something. Yeah. And it's just like, so like frilly and ridiculous. And, but I love that yeah. shit. Well, cause, yeah. <laughs> cause you're like, cause you're the guy who's like, yeah, these, these left bank deep cuts just aren't far enough out there for me. Right. Like I need to go no, all I mean, the way I down got, this yeah, rabbit hole. You know, I dove in, man. I was like, oh, there's different versions of Desiree. Like, you know, it's like, it's just, it gets ridiculous. But, but I don't, I'm not as, you know, these days, it's, it's, I think there was a point where I was doing that a lot more and diving in yeah. now. And it's strangely, I haven't been doing as much like listening to music in the pandemic because mm. I've been able to kind of do a lot of actual playing that yeah. it's, you know, when it's done, it's just like, I'm just about to watch something or, 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 you know, or listen to a podcast or read or something. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But so, it's, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to, going back to tour touring to, to just sit and listen to you know stuff which is which yeah. is so much of so much of a fun part of that you know right. hanging out after the show and listening to listen to songs you know so yeah um all right man thank you so much this has yeah. been such a joy man thank you for having me sorry yeah you know what you're getting into, though. I, I mean, oh, this, is, this, is, totally. this is what I signed up for, and this is totally what Mary signed up for. I'll go back and read the chat comments later and see what other people... But I did see when you were playing, I saw a whole big stream of, like, hearts and smiley face emojis, like, floating up the screen, so... Oh, cool. Well, that's awesome. And this this, this stays up, right? I'm fit, cause I'm yeah, this will be up, and I'll send you a link, and, and uh, yeah. Sweet, man. Well, it's great to see y'all. Great to I'll see be you. be virtually. Yeah. Um, yeah, love to Katie. And um, we're going to watch the show on Wednesday night. And we encourage all our viewers to watch the Drive-By Truckers Thanksgiving filter on Wednesday night at 9 right, p.m. Eastern yeah. on Noon Chorus. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much. All right. Love Take you care, Katie. buddy. Love you. Love you guys. Yeah.